Hi, my name is Garai Birdie. I'm a chartered professional accountant serving clients located throughout the GTA in Ontario, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to provide you a guideline for incorporating a company in Canada for your business. Let's get started. The first step begins with understanding the two types of corporations in Canada a federal corporation and provincial corporation. Clients always ask me what the difference is between the two. From a tax perspective, there is no corporate tax benefit from one over the other. They are treated equally for tax purposes. A federal corporation can be searched easily on the Industry Canada website. Some of the details that can be viewed by the public are the director's name, addresses, the date of incorporation, and the status of the corporation. On the other hand, a provincial corporation is more private. A federal corporation has stronger name restrictions on the corporate name when registering. No other corporation in all of Canada can have the same company name as a federal corporation. With a provincial corporation, the same name or very similar name can be registered in a neighboring province. Since a federal corporation can be registered by anyone online at Industry Canada's website, it can be more cost efficient compared to a provincial corporation that is usually through a lawyer or accountant. Sometimes people think that with a federal corporation, you can do business anywhere in Canada, whereas with a provincial corporation, you can do business only locally in the province of registration. This is incorrect. Both corporation types may do business anywhere in Canada, so long they have the extra provincial license. Whether you decide to incorporate federally or provincially, the Articles of Incorporation process is very similar for both. You need to determine a company name for your corporation. It should have a descriptive element and a distinctive element, so it can be distinguished from other similar company names. For example, Bob Inc. is too generic. Bob's Networking Consulting Inc. is more descriptive and distinct. The incorporation date generally does not matter. However, for tax filing purposes, it does. Your first year end can be extended up to 371 days. For example, if you incorporated on May 25th, 2015 and wanted a year end of May 31st, 2016, you would only need to file one corporate tax return versus if you incorporated on May 24th, 2015, you would need to file two corporate tax returns to have a May 31st, 2016 year end. One of the returns would be a short T2 and one would be a long T2 return. Thus, increasing your accounting fees. Director and residency requirements means that you need at least 25% of the directors to be residents of Canada. If there are only two directors, at least one director must be a resident of Canada. This is very important to get the low corporate tax rate in Canada. Certain corporation types must have a specific business restriction clause to be in compliance with the governing body. This is mostly found in professional corporations for medical professionals such as doctors and dentists. Creating classes of shares to issue shares to shareholders and having the correct share clauses is the most important aspect for tax planning. If you are planning to income split, Make sure you consult with a tax accountant to ensure your share clauses and classes are set up correctly before you incorporate 
to avoid unnecessary amendment, amendment fees. A corporation is required legally to have a minute book to be in compliance with the Federal or Provincial Business Corporations Act. The minute book contains documents such as the Articles of Incorporation, Bylaws, Resolution, Shareholder Certificates, and Director Registry. In case you are incorporating an existing business, make sure you consult with a tax accountant to avoid a potential capital gains tax. You should elect under Section 85 of the Income Tax Act to avoid it. You can read about this strategy on our blog. A lot of individuals confuse the address requirements for a federal and provincial corporation. A federal corporation may have a head registered office located anywhere in Canada. A provincial corporation must have its head registered office located in the same province of incorporation. Sometimes for tax planning purposes, it can be advantageous to incorporate in another province. One of the strategies used to meet the address requirement is to obtain virtual mailing address services. This allows you to forward the mail to another address but will allow you to meet the address requirement for incorporation purposes. Once you're incorporated, make sure you do the following. Open a corporate bank account. Since the corporation is a separate legal entity of its own, it should have a separate corporate bank account and not mixed with your personal account. Apply for a corporate credit card. This is the best way to build a credit history for your corporation and in the future easily get approved for a business loan. If your sales will exceed $30,000, make sure you register for HST. Even if your sales are less, it can be advantageous to still register for HST to get an HST refund. Most importantly, make sure you consult with a tax accountant to ensure you tax plan so you are using your corporation efficiently for tax savings. I hope you found this video helpful. If you require assistance with incorporating your company, either federally or provincially, I encourage you to get in touch with me. I would also encourage you to visit our website at birdie.ca where you can schedule a free consultation to discuss your situation. You can leave us a question on our tax form, read our blog for tax tips. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe for more great tax tip videos on the way. Thank you for watching.